This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, it is Wednesday night when we come right into your home to with open talk. You talk or I talk. Who hear who? And we hear one another and we move on. Now, Open Talk is, an, is, a, is a program that comes to you every Wednesday night, and it is founded on the Word of God. Our foundation is the Word of God, and we bring in guests who will come and uh, give us their story and tell us openly how they got to where they are. The aim is that you may receive something out of the lives uh, or the, the nuggets that you give to us. You will receive something that will lift you up. Your heart will encourage you. Open talk, open talk, you may get a rebuke, you may get a correction, you will get an encouragement, you will, may even get a prophetic word, you may even get a direction or word, whatever it is. But I want to say thank you so very much for tuning on, uh, on, on tonight on the One Accord television. This is your, your pastor and your friend for a long time, Bishop Mark Karaoke, coming to you through Open Talk. We have brought in several guests and they have been a blessing to us. And I pray that even tonight you will be blessed because we have yet another guest. Yet we have, an, uh, we have yet, uh, yet another guest who is coming to be a blessing to us just to open up their, their lives. And this is Reverend uh, uh, Evans and Jacqueline Ka, uh, Kaunya. Kaunya. Kaunya is not, uh, is not just another name. It's a, power, it's a powerful name. <laughs> uh, Reverend uh, Evans and Jacqueline Kauna are uh, pastors, senior pastors in Deliverance Church, Morera, yes. and they are doing a tremendous job. They're doing a tremendous job. I happened to pass there last week, and I saw it, and I saw the building they put up. It's been there for quite some time, and the work they are doing, and I thought, these are people who could be a blessing to you. So, well, if you're a business person, if you're a pastor, if you're a businesswoman, whatever you are doing, you will, you will be blessed by their story. I want us, uh, I want us to welcome uh, Reverend uh, uh, Evans and, uh, and Jacqueline. Welcome to Open, to Open Talk. Would you want to say jumbo to the people? Yes. Uh, I'm grateful, sir, to come. And uh, I'm grateful to be here today to share our story and what God has done. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching us from, we welcome you to hear our story. Hope we shall inspire you and make your life better by our story. Thank you. Thank you oh, so I'll much. say something. Yes, Jacqueline, would you want to say jump to the people? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be here and I'm happy. Mm. I thank God for Bishop for hosting us today. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and watching us. We have a story to tell. And you know, we know that it's going to bless you mm. and it's going to, to keep to be as a memory in, in this day. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. very much. Thanks. So, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. You are the one to receive. Uh -huh. Remember, every time you hear the word, mm -hmm. it is you to pick that word mm -hmm. and to allow that word to work in you. Yes. And remember that sharp iron sharpens iron. So open up your spirit, open up your heart mm -hmm. as, we, as we move together and participate. You write to us, send a text message, you send a comment, and we will get back to you. This is your program and our program. Yes. Reverend, yes, sir. W w welcome to this program. But it's so you. good to see you. Thank now, you. Now tell me, yes. uh, Kaunya. Yes. Kaunya is not very common. Very few. I, I went to many <laughs> schools, but I never met any students by the name of Kaunya. Kaunya is a Teso name. Kaunya is a Teso name. Uh, means harvest, a son oh. born during harvest. We have very few uh, called Kaunya in this nation. And I think the other Kaunyas are very prominent people in the nation. So every time the police stop me on a roadblock, I, they ask me, who are you? I say, I'm Kaunya. They say, sir, we are very sorry. We are not supposed to stop you. <laughs> so, so I proceed. I don't know the rest of the Kaunyas, but I know a few who are in parliament. I know a DC by the same name, but we are not related. Uh -huh. So the grace has been sufficient on this Kaunya. <laughs> So I come from Busia, um, born 50 year, almost 50 years ago, and by the grace of God, relocated to Kiambu, and in particular Ruiru. That's where we minister at a place called Kimbo, and our church is Deliverance Church Morera. Okay. 
Uh, now tell me, tell me, when you were yeah. born in Busia, yes. how many are you in your family? Uh, we were born in a family of three. It's unfortunate my brother went to be with the Lord. We are now two. And yes. what did your parents do? My parents were farmers all their lives. My mom has gone to be with the Lord. My father is still alive. So they have been farmers all their lives. Okay. Yes. Uh, oh. Farmland is just good land in Busia. You come down there, crops are doing well. People to take care of a few animals. We are nomads. Mm -hmm. We are like the Maasai and the other nomadic uh, mm -hmm. people of Kenya. Okay. Yes. And Jacqueline. Yes, sir. To tell us, where were you born? Uh, I was born in Taita Taveta, Wundani County, mm. almost 50 years ago. Mm. My parents were teachers in two different schools. Mm. We were eight in the family. Okay, three brothers and five sisters. And uh, that is where I went to school, and uh, both primary school and mm. secondary school. Mm. And here I am. Wow. Yes. You were born in Taita Taveta? Taita Which part of Taita Taveta? Wundani. Wundani? Ndabida? Yes. Ay, Wano Kaso? Amen. Ah, chapter sana. <laughs> Naboi wa putu. Amen. Na mune kabwana nguma Amen. kwa kunkira. Chapter sana. Nabangu wa Marco. Amen. Dafuma Mbololo. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 So those of you who thought I didn't know, I don't, I didn't know any other language <laughs> other than Swahili. At least you have known there's an, another language yes. That, yes. I, that I that I know. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank yes. you so very much. Mm. You know, in, in during open talk, yes. we want to go, we want to see the hand of God upon yeah. your life. Yes. We want to know where you were born, uh, mm. were born and how you grew up. Mm. Were, you, were you brought up as a Christian mm. or how was it? T t t tell us about, uh, uh, about your background. Uh, my background is a little bit hard. Uh, I came from a family where people didn't go to church. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents didn't go to church. My grandparents didn't go to church. Uh, and I had a desire to go to church. I remember going to the Anglican church when I was a small kid, every day they had to do the drum thing to awaken the village to go to church or do a bell so everybody will wake up and go to church. And all my life, I think church was in me, that I went to church, I was dedicated as a child in the Anglican church. Later on, Pentecostalism came to our villages in the 80s. Mm -hmm. The first time we had people were clapping and shouting. The village had been quiet, but, but wherever I went to school, there, there was Christianity coming now in a different manner. Then I joined the Free Pentecost Church, and we clapped a lot. And I enjoyed the clapping, uh, but, but still I went to my Anglican church because I had an attachment. Uh, having been born in a poor family, uh, the things were not easy for us. And uh, I remember every time the bishop came, I always admired the bishop. He had so many clothes on him, and we walked naked in the village. So one thing that just attracted me to church is the way the priest dressed, the way the bishop dressed, that, that thing made my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, as a kid, I gave my life to Christ. It's now over, over 39 years mm -hmm. in my walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say I regret. That's the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, having been brought up in villages where there was witchcraft, there, there, there were issues with traditions, I separated myself to serve God. Then when I came to town, uh, I made sure I went to a Pentecostal church. And, and I've been to church all my life. I even got married in church. So, so my life has been in church. The only time I left church, I left church in 2004 to go and work for USID. Because mm -hmm. I was also trying to look for a way to make life. Mm -hmm. And I worked for USID for two years, and they sacked me without notice. They sacked me and wrote me a good recommendation letter. They said, if you need a good man to employ this, a good man. And I wondered, how sack a good man? I had stolen nobody's nothing, and life was good, but, but I was just sacked. And I went back to church again. Mm -hmm. I, and I've remained in church. I'm not going back to USID anymore. Mm -hmm. I've remained in church. This is now my line. I, I think God wanted me on this path. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful. I found my footing in church, brought my children up in church, lived as a Christian all my life. And I thank God. I thank God. Mm -hmm. The you, grace. You, you were brought up in, in Busia. Yes. So how did you end up in Nairobi? Well, uh, looking for life. 
looking for life. Nairobi is the city of choice. Yes. Uh, of course, after, after school, you need to come to Nairobi to look for Kibaroa, mm. see that your life moves on, mm. change your story a little bit. Mm. So, so I had to come to Nairobi. There, there was no doubt in my mind. Nairobi was the destination of my life. Mm. And when I came here almost 30 years ago, I was coming to make it. There was no way out for me anymore. Mm. I had to come. So you had some relatives here or some friends? I had a brother. Or did you just jump into a bus? I had a brother. My brother was working already in the city mm -hmm. and living in Kibera. So, so I joined him. Okay. Yes, that's so how what, I landed what, in Nairobi. What, what did you do? Well, when I came to Nairobi, I've done everything. I've done Mjengo. There are buildings in this city I can point and say, Nilichimba Yo Foundation. Uh, I, I've been a watchman. Mm -hmm. I've guarded people's doors. Uh, what else did I do? I've sold medicine for a, a medical company in this city. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, I, I think from Medical Kenya Limited, I went back to church. Bishop got caught of me and took me back to church. And I began to work in church as a church guard, not a preacher. Mm -hmm. I was guarding our church. I was the one opening the door and washing the bishop's car. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I did that for many years. And by God's grace, that's how I met my wife. Of course, if I was opening the gate, I saw her coming. Oh, now we will, we will, we will, we will continue. We will, we will come. The story is big, Bishop. The story is big. We will That's a that. big story. You see, you see, when people see you, yeah. they can't imagine mm -hmm. that you would ever be a guard, or you would be a watchman, God, or you would dig trenches. God has washed and kept that as a secret. Uh, yes. Let's come to Jacqueline. Yes. So, Jacqueline, how, where were you born, and uh, and how, how are your parents? Who are your parents? My parents, uh, both of them were teachers in schools, primary schools in Wundany Division that time. And I was brought up in the Anglican Church that time, the SCK, mm -hmm. the CPK that time. Mm -hmm. These days, it's the Anglican Church. Mm -hmm. I remember back then, my father was was a teacher. Yes, he was a headmaster in school but he used to drink so much. But then again, there's something about the Anglican. They don't mind about what you do at home or outside the church. Mm. Even after that drinking, that situation of him being drunk on Sunday, on Saturday very early, he would start preparing to be in church on Sunday. Mm. And he would prepare each one of us to go to church. Mm. So we grew up in the Anglican setup. I was baptized and I was uh, received confirmation. But now in school, in secondary school, I desired to go back to, to, to go to the Pentecostal side. Mm. We had a strong CU that time. And after school, I went to live in Mombasa with my sister. That was when I got born again mm. in the JCC, JCC church the church where Pastor Lai ministers. Mm -hmm. I received Jesus and I began to walk faithfully with the Lord and serving him there in, even in the humble, um, the, those, those humble uh, ministries. Mm -hmm. And that is where I came from. Okay, okay. wow, that is, that is quite, quite something. So how did you end up in Nairobi? Mm, okay, in Mombasa I used to, I worked for a few firms. I started working immediately after school from for that time. I worked in a curio shop in Mombasa, but then it was not the kind of job I would say was fulfilling because that is what, not what I desired to do. Mm -hmm. I had a purpose to be a nurse. I wanted to be a nurse after school, but then that opportunity did not come through for me. So I started doing, searching for jobs and that one came through. I worked for like two years, another opportunity came, it uh, opened up in a clearing and forwarding farm, still in Mombasa. I worked uh, under my brother-in-law, my sister was married that time. So I worked with them for like four years. That was the time I got born again. And then an opportunity came for me to come to Nairobi to do some classes, secretarial studies. So I had to come here, I finished the course, and then I got an opportunity for the job I'm, do I'm doing right now. Uh, I work with KRA. So when it came, I had to come to Nairobi and uh, 
I'm still here. I'm still there up to this moment. This time mm -hmm. I'm in Dika. I work in Dika Station. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm serving God there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yes. So you have, or both of you have come to Nairobi. Yes. And uh, you, are a, you, are, you are a guard. Yes. You are washing the bishop's car. Yes. You are now a churchman. Yes. You are an official yes. churchman. Yes. And she is working here. Yes. So how did you, how did you ever meet? We, we met... Uh, in a very funny way, and it's good for the young people to know mm -hmm. that, that uh, in our church, I didn't have money to participate in people's wedding. So this is what used to happen. Wherever, whenever we had a wedding, there was a job allocated for me to wash the dishes, to wash the church, and to peel the potatoes. Automatically, my name had to be assigned to that job. So one day, when I'm just peeling the potatoes, looking down, I looked up and I saw a beautiful woman, and I said, wow. And we are all peeling the potatoes. I went back to the potatoes, but I said in my heart, Jesus, I've seen my wife. Oh. Just like that. Just, just like that? Yes. I've seen my wife. And you continued peeling the potatoes? I continued peeling the potatoes. I was faithful to the job, and the brother got married, and I knew I'm the second one getting married, because I've already seen a wife. So, so when, you, when you saw the wife? I looked for her, and I said, can we meet? Now that's the good part, Bishop. You, 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 you told her that same day? No. Mm. I need to be careful, Bishop. At least I need to shower. I don't need to no, look that, like that's the what potatoes. We want, to, we want to hear I that. I need to look like the potatoes. At yeah. least a Sunday afternoon, mm. uh, after church, I said, Sister, can we talk? One of these days, she said yes. Mm. So, so we agreed where we were to meet. Mm. Uh, we were living by then in Kangemi. Mm. There was a small restaurant. I said, this is the best and perfect place. Mm. So I asked Bishop to bless me with 100 bob. Mm. And there was, very some, there was something very important I wanted to do with the money, which mm. I did not disclose. In fact, that day I washed his car very well. He mm. had to be generous. He gave me the 100 shillings. Uh -huh. So the 100 shillings was enough. I remember it was a Thursday. Mm. Uh, we didn't have phones. Mm. So I had to be there early to check the environment if things are still OK. Mm -hmm. So we I booked a seat where I sat and waited for her when she came. I made sure she ordered first. I knew the menu, 100 was still a lot, mm. so uh, she had to order. If she orders up to 80, I'm still very comfortable. Mm. So she ordered, then I ordered myself a cup of tea, and we had a good conversation. And I posed the question, I love you, my sister, I want to marry you. Mm. And of course, there's the waiting season of two weeks. And as we waited for two weeks, uh, Bishop had to come again and aid me out and give me another 100 bob for You're this other me, date. What, 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 how did you get the, the second 100 bob? Yes. Direct from my boss. Yeah. Uh, make sure his books are in place. Make sure his clothes from White Rose are ready. Make mm. sure the car is very clean and sparkling. So that when I go for the question, bail me out, he will not refuse. Mm. And Bishop loved me. Uh, mm. I'll tell you part of the story that Bishop did a good job on me. Mm -hmm. By the time I was coming to church, I was not the man you see today. Bishop had to deal with the issues of faithfulness. He had never touched money. Sometimes he could send me for soda. I remember sodas were seven shillings and 50 cents, mm. and I could not return two shillings and 50 cents. Mm. And that evening, I would not be allowed to be the interpreter to the bishop because I've stolen two shillings. Mm. And that punishment could go for six months. And to a preacher, being told to sit down for six months, better somebody canes you today and that is done and then you're back to the pulpit. Mm. So Bishop had to work on the issues of faithfulness, deal with me until he reached a point he could trust me. Even mm. today, if we meet and he gives me a million, he knows I will take care of a mission. Because one time I was his organizing sector and I did a lot of things with the money and I accounted for the money. Mm. I will tell you how I began to return the change. But for today, uh, let's talk about her. So that day, Bishop gave me 100 shillings. Mm. And as usual, there is no phone. Mm. We had communicated, we are meeting in our special small cave again. I went back. To your surprise, Bishop, the cave was closed. Oh, when, oh, you, when you went? When I went. This is the second trip now? Second one, and I'm coming for the answer. If uh -huh. you are getting married or not, this place is closed. Now I don't know if I have to go back to church uh -huh. or I have to wait. So I waited. I waited. Uh, for after almost an hour, she came. Mm. So as I was going to meet her, I mm. realized I was standing on the opposite side of the cave. The door is on the other side. My anxiety did not allow me even to cross. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I was sweating. I was sweating. But of course, I had a hundred shillings for the cup of tea again, and we had our tea that evening, and our talk was good, and my sister told me we are getting married. Wow. And that, that is the best news I ever received. And now I had to pass that information to my family. I had to begin to plan to take her to my family. Uh, now, um, before you take her to your, to your, to your family. Yes. So, Jacqueline, <laughs> you, are, you, are, you, you have been invited for a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God she didn't know I, I had 100. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your thought when he told you, can we meet? Okay, I was willing that time. I was so much willing because I was really trusting God now for for a partner in marriage. Uh, after a long time of waiting, now I was sure now this is the person because um, of the way we are meeting. We are both serving God, and I, I was trusting some God for somebody who is who, who will be faithful, who will be responsible, who is born again, of course. That was uh, what I was trusting God for. So I knew here I was in the right place. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I faithfully went there. And we sat together. We, we spoke. And uh, we began to look for the so way forward. So why, why did you give him two weeks? Why did you tell him to, you to wait for two weeks? Because now I was... The longest period in his life. <laughs> <laughs> for me, that time, it was the... Okay, I was so sure it was the right time. Okay. And I didn't want to maybe waste more time mm -hmm. uh, telling him to wait for six months or more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it was the right time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now she has, uh, that, that, that was the first meeting. That yes, was the, the second, second meeting. The second meeting when the cave seems to have been shut and yes. it's not shut. Yes. <laughs> That's when you, you came and you said, yeah, yeah. You told him yes. Yes. Okay. So you have started the process. That was the better part of it, Bishop. And looking back, I think my faith, uh, I'm strong in faith, Bishop. I, I remember 2020, is it 2019? We were in Umoja and we were commissioning the year. I'm among the people who gave a testimony. And Mom Joyce commented on my faith. 2019, the devil began to play around with my health and I stood my ground and told the devil it doesn't work like that. So I've always believed God, even where there is no door, God can make a door. I planned with my sister to go home and when we went home, Bishop, there was no home to go to. Mm. Uh, there was that small grass touched house. Of course, my mother had passed on, my father was living alone. There, there was a round stump of something, a, a stump of a tree cut from something just like that. That was a chair. So I said to my girlfriend, sit. And my father, I think, was trying to make something so it was very smoky. So I brought this Muzungu girl, and all of a sudden her eyes are watery uh, because of the smoke. I knew this thing is just over. <laughs> By the time we leave this small house, this girl will tell me off. Uh, so I waited for that uh, when we came out and I said, uh, are we still getting married? She said, yes. I said, thank you. <laughs> and from there, things were not easy for us. Uh, there are so many people who played a big role. I remember the Reverend Zola is in somewhere Tasia. Uh, he was our best man. He encouraged me. I went to Gikomba to buy the, uh, what, what are they called? Mitumba suits. I could not get one, so I bought the coat alone. And then on one of the journeys back to our place, again, I went to Uganda. We are very close on the border. I bought some good trousers for the best man and myself. So it was trying to patch this thing to come together. Mm. It was not easy. Mm. Uh, the dowry part of it was just hectic, mm. quite hard. I even didn't know how things were going to work out. I remember. It was on a Wednesday, we are going on Saturdays, when the bishop called me and said, are you still going for your dowry uh, payment? I said, yes. He said, when? I said, on Saturday. Uh, my father is coming tomorrow. They rest for a day, then we travel on a Friday. That's the day the heavens opened up for me. For the first time, I tied some good money. Bishop gave me 18,000. I saw heaven. Mm -hmm. So I knew that was part of my salary advance, so I had to take care of it. That evening, by God's grace, I got 20K from another source. Mm -hmm. 
I got another 10K, I remember. But, but by the time I was going to bed, I had 50. Mm. So living in Kangemi and you have 50, you are a multimillionaire. You need to be very careful. People can kill you. Mm. People have never seen 1K, but you have 50 under your bed, hidden somewhere. So I bought my father's shoes, bought him some mitumba clothes so that we travel to Taita. Bishop, you will be shocked what my father did with the shoes. Mm. He had never worn shoes for all his life. Mm. So the shoes got the better of him. He removed them off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was for the night as we traveled. Uh. We arrived in Taita, he's still carrying his shoes. Uh. Taita is a hilly place, so the home is down there. People uh. see the visas coming from up there, uh. and they are carrying their shoes. Uh. And we expect them to carry money. Uh, this is a mistake. Uh. So I tried to beg my father to put on his shoes. He refused. He said he can't. Uh. So he carried his shoes to my in-law's home. Uh. I remember by that time, the Toyota Hilux double cabin was the new car in the market. And one of our relatives had driven that car to the family. There were other cars. But, but we, we came like the prophets who came from the mountain and we were marching by God's grace to go and pay the dower we didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> and we were received. <laughs> oh, God is faithful. We were received. God bless the, the soul of my late father-in-law. Uh. We were received. The place was packed. Uh. People are waiting for dowry negotiations. I had mentioned to my father-in-law mm. on one of our previous visits that if I come back, mm. don't mind whoever brings me. Mm. They will have given me nothing. I'm just coming back the way I am. Mm. Thank God all the brothers in church who were to take me for this session refused. Mm. Even the brother who had the car refused to give us a ride. And we had the fuel. On the, uh, I think the last minute promise, he broke his promise. Mm. So we just traveled, my wife, myself, my father, and my uncle. Mm. So we arrived in Taita to pay dawa. <laughs> Things got bad for us. Mm. My father was asked why he's there. And of course, people from our side don't know how to speak Swahili. My father began, I mutoto, I mutoto. My father-in-law was very categorical. I asked him, why are you here? Mm. And to my father, that was a good question. Mm. And before he answered, he was asked another question. Did you see my daughter in your home? He said, yes. Did you receive her? Yes. Mm. Even if you have nothing, cool down. Mm. A marriage is going to take place. Mm. And that gave me peace. And my father-in-law sent everybody out of that room. Mm. We were only with my father-in-law, my mother-in-law. I think there was another one person. Mm. And he asked us what we brought. Mm. And I said to my father, the usual courtesy uh, request, let's go out and talk. Mm. So I gave him 25000 I remember, to give to my father-in-law. And then my father turned on me again and said, this is a lot of money. <laughs> How can you give out all this money? I said, man, I've just given you my money. <laughs> this is not our money. In fact, it's expected you should have come with something. How can you be speaking like that? Because I know in Taita, my wife had told me there are other things to be done. Mm. There, there are blankets, we had bought them. There is food, we had bought it. Mm. And then we had some little money for the people who cooked in that ceremony. Mm. So when my father-in-law was given that money, I, I remember literally said, Ui mtoto siyo wawatu ni wangu. He picked the man and kept it in his coat and called everybody back. Mm. He said, I've talked to these people. They have brought nothing, mm. but, but I've already told them on the 1st of May, mm. we're going to have a wedding. Mm. And everybody was mad. How can you allow them to get married without giving out anything? Mm. So they began to make the normal demands, uh, the blankets for the grandmother and the mother. And we said, we have them. So mm. we presented. They said, thank you. Uh, food. We presented food, and then we presented the money for the people who cooked. Mm. That's how we were granted a wedding. Mm. And on the day of our wedding, Bishop, God did a miracle. There was no water in Nairobi. Mm. People literally washed their hands with cork, soda. Mm. This is the only wedding I've seen people wash their hands with soda. There were people who were just washing their hands to eat with soda. And I'm like, God, mm. in a poor man's wedding, People wash their hands with soda. soda. This is God. <laughs> hey. And I remember all the men of God in Nairobi were there. Mm. And when they prayed for us, they were very specific. Mm. Bless them with money. Bless them with children. Bless them with... The, they were very specific. Mm. Everything they mentioned, God has given us. Where, where was the wedding? At, 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 the, at the Anglican church? No, Kangemi Harvest Church at Bishop Wachara's place. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's where we held our wedding. Okay. And the reception also.
Uh -huh. We didn't know if there are gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, I see nowadays people, I uh, wed people in charge, they drive away again to eat the rice somewhere else. Ours was to wait there, have the rice there, have the cake and go home. Uh, yeah, there was no much pleasure. Wow. Okay, so how did you end up in, in Deliverance Church? We ended up in Deliverance Church, can I say by default or by <laughs> mistake? <laughs> We've just moved to Kangemi, not uh -huh. to Kangemi, to Ruiru uh -huh. 20 years ago. Uh -huh. And there are no churches. Mm -hmm. Ruiru is just a desert. There are just a few homes. So of course we had to look for a church. Mm -hmm. So one, one day driving, not driving, riding my bicycle to Ruiru town, I realized there's a deliverance church just next to the power station. Mm -hmm. So I went in and I found pastor. We talked and I said, we've just moved in. We've come from this place. So pastor said, come to church. Mm -hmm. By then the church had around 150, 200. Yeah, it was just a small church, uh, and we were willing to give uh, a try to this new place. But because going to Kangemi is just unmentionable. How can we reach Kangemi again? Mm -hmm. so, so we went to Deliverance Church, uh, Deliverance Church Ruiru for a year. Mm -hmm. Then on the second year, Reverend was opening a church. Uh, we, we didn't mind about him opening a church. We, 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 didn't have, we didn't tell him we are pastors. We didn't tell him we are ministers. But to our shock, the church was open. Two weeks later, I didn't have a pastor. Mm. I remember I was in a current uh, in a meeting. Then, then Reverend calls me and says, where are you? I said, I'm in a current. Can I see you tomorrow? That's in the evening. I said, yes. Uh, three o'clock, I was there. He said, let's go and see a church I've opened. We, we drove to Morera. And that's how Reverend left me in Murera 20 years down there. No, 14 years now. Mm. He, he told me, Pastor, this church. And I didn't know how to say no. So mm. I just said yes. I don't know what's happening here. The, the whole thing is, is, is just like, 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 like a dream to me. Mm. So, so I was left in Murera. Uh, I resigned from my job. Mm. I just began to pastor this new church with 10 members. And I've been pastoring this church ever since. I don't know how this thing works. <laughs> I it has been a dream for me. Uh, it has been a dream for me. And uh, I think this was the first church planted by Deliverance Ruiru. Mm -hmm. so, so they made sure their church is working. Every time they call me, how are you doing? I say, I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. And of course, the church was under him. He sees the reports and the returns. Mm -hmm. so, so I kept on. I, I think after just six months, we were beginning to buy our plots. Mm -hmm. What we were doing by that time, we wanted to plaster our church. Then, then I said, 100,000 that we've seen, we can have faith that God can provide for us a plot. Mm -hmm. Because plots were not very expensive. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that our first plot was how much? Uh, around 500,000. Mm -hmm. Currently valued at 10 million. Mm -hmm. So I put my faith forward and I said to the people, I have your 100,000. Everybody should pledge something. Mm. So that we add to this money, we buy a plot. We had not told the ref. Mm. So, so we pledged that Sunday, we got another 70. Mm. So we had 170. I went to see ref, and I told him I want to buy land. And he said, this is a good idea. He looked at our account, there was something. Mm. We bought our first plot. Wow. And I said to the people, we are moving. Next year, we are moving. We're mm -hmm. going to our plot. Mm. So I got somebody to write for me, Deliverance Church, Murera coming soon where we are now, mm -hmm. and I put that post there. And every time people call me and said, when are you coming? I said, just give me a little time, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And by God's grace, we built the Sunday school. Mm -hmm. So the people said, your church is too small. I said, we're beginning from there. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that's our Sunday school. So mm -hmm. the following week, uh, following month, we demolished our church, did a Mabati church, 50 by 30, we were ready to move. And we called our over, uh, overseer now, he came, commissioned us, and we've been there. And we're doing good. We bought another piece of land. I think the land now for the church is valued at around 20 million, plus the buildings. Our value is good. Our value is good. Mm. Yes. Wow. That is great. Something you are dropped and you are told you pastor this church. Pastor this church. And you just. No how, interview for the job, uh, no conditions and no terms. Uh, <laughs> so, how did you feel when he came and told you, oh, I am now pastoring? I have now been told to pastor church. <laughs> It came as a big surprise to me because it's something we didn't expect. Okay, for him, I don't know, because he's been serving in the ministry, even though not as a pastor, mm -hmm. he had that back background. But for me, 
it was a big surprise. Here I am, I'm uh, totally new to ministry, but again, I didn't want to say no. And I gave him the, I, I, I told him to, to just let us trust God to go ahead by his grace. We knew God is on our side and uh, he has been faithful all through. We have seen him faithful in everything for provision. Mm. Yes, he has been with us. I and would say it's by his grace. Do, do, you, do you have children? Yes. How many children do you have? We have two children. Mm. Uh, our first born is in Daystar University, mm -hmm. and our second born is in class six, class seven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So when you were starting the, the, the church, mm. you had both of them or you had one? We had one. We had one girl. Mm -hmm. We had one girl. One of them came, I think, two or three years later mm -hmm. after the ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. <gasps> that was just a good scenario, Bishop. Eh. The three of us on a bicycle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and none of the church members ever saw our bicycle. Hey. They only knew we have a bicycle we ride because we rode to the road, kept it somewhere, uh, then took a matatu to church. So when we come back again, pick our bicycle, ride back home. Wow. And that's, that. Uh, I remember my wife and my daughter quarreling, mom, songa, mom, I don't know songa where. Mom, and then school, mom, mom, Katie, <laughs> So you are, both of them were sitting on the yes, back, on the yes, back seat. Yes, yes. Uh, of, seat of, of the bicycle. Yes. And you, you are there. sweating. Mm. Umeva, die, you are sweating. By the time you get to church, you're just wet. It's not uh. anointing, it is sweat. Uh. But, but God was faithful. And we kept wow. on preaching. Wow. We kept on preaching. Uh -huh. uh, and I remember in Catalonia one evening, I was praying, uh, and the pastor was praying for a car. And I was the one interpreting for him. He said he needs a big car. I said, God, anything, anything that moves, mm -hmm. it will really solve my situation. Mm -hmm. I wish I had prayed for a bigger thing that day. The grace was sufficient. Mm -hmm. Because two weeks later, mm -hmm. I had my first car. And wow. you saw my car in Nakura. I remember you were at the Anglican guest house. You remember mm. my white small car? Mm. Uh, one day you made a comment over it. You said, I see this man. He came mm. here walking. Now he drives. Uh -huh. I said, Bishop, you said right. Uh -huh. Yes. That, that wow. white car was the pride of our lives. Oh, uh -huh. I even woke up at nine to look at it. Uh -huh. I could just smile. And I could drive and put my hand outside and say hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a, a Toyota 100. It's not a powerful car, uh, but to us, oh, Bishop. You are out of the bicycle. Oh. <laughs> and not only the bicycle, uh, the church work became easy for us. Uh, and I remember a man called me one day and said, it's not the car. It's the speed of the work that you've uh, been added to. Mm. And I said, God, thank you. There were things we could not do. There were places we could delay going, waiting for a matatu here, waiting for a ride with somebody else. It was quite an issue for us. But mm. when that car came, I, I think that's the most cherished car for us, Bishop. Mm. It, it doesn't matter what we'll drive in this world how, or how we shall fly. The memory we have of a car is mm. the Toyota 100. Mm. K-A-N, five something. Oh, that, <laughs> that was our car. <laughs> uh, Nakuru became yeah. easy for us. B B Bishop, I don't know if you know there are intrigues when we come to Nakuru. People yeah. don't give others lift. Yeah. It doesn't matter the size of your bag and the beauty of your wife. People just drive off and leave you on the roadside waiting for a matatu. Is that so? Oh, Bishop. Uh, God help us. So when our white car came, uh, <laughs> we were in the class of class of men who that drive. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God has been good to us. God has been good. Uh, to at us. least you are delivered. Praise God. Ah, uh, with with with, God. with with thank God. Amen. And how is how is the church? Church is doing well, Bishop. Mm. Uh, we've done well. By the time Corona came, we were doing two services. Okay. And the church was closed, mm. and the church was reopened, and we were shocked. Mm. And the first Sunday, we were less than 50. Wow. That was a good shock for us. And we were like, where are the people? Where did they go to? <laughs> yeah. well, of course, it didn't shock us as much, because during Corona, Bishop, things have not been easy. Mm. And I said to a fellow pastor, if you've not resigned by now, mm. you have a calling. Mm. Because many pastors we know have left church. 
Mm. Uh, and during Corona, I realized members are very keen on even their giving. Mm. Uh, we decided to do the pay bill numbers. People were not sending the money. Mm. There was no money in the bank. Mm. But, but they called me every night and said, the children are sleeping hungry. Mm. Uh, the money we give every Sunday, since you keep, mm. why don't you do something? Mm. So we decided to buy food. We decided to buy milk for the children. We decided to pay accommodation for the people. Mm. Wh whatever we could do to salvage the situation, things have not been easy. Mm. But, but the grace has kept us. Eh? And people began to come up and new members began to come to church. Uh, we've seen, can we say, fate pull us through the darkest moments. Mm. There, there were times, as a pastor, you sit down and ask yourself, what next? Mm. You look at yourself without salary, you look at your children out of school, uh, we, are, we, are, we have a daughter in the university, and you begin to ask yourself, if I postpone my own child education, what will people say? Where is the fate of the pastor? Mm. So every day, Bishop, since Corona came, it is by faith, by faith. Sometimes, uh, by, by God's grace, we graduated from Toyota 100, uh, we have now two cars. Mm. Uh, sometimes it is a car that moves, mine stays in the garage for a week. You don't touch it because it might stall somewhere. Mm. Uh, it is running by grace. So if it has little fuel, we'll use that for Sunday morning because I go to church very early. You, you can't afford just to be careless. Mm. So, so things during this time, to give the real picture of the church, I, I think the church has been shifted and the faithful have remained. All the pretenders who are in church, I think, left. Mm. Both the minister, and the faithful mm. have left. The people who have remained in church are those who say, my hope is in the Lord, and my salvation comes only from God. Mm. And waking up to, to, to go to preach on Sunday needs now wisdom. Uh, because you can mention some things and people say, Pastor, you, you, you're not serious. What did you say? Mm. So, so we, we need now to build a faith of the people who are the remnants that have remained in church, mm. encourage them to continue in the Lord. Uh, it's like people are at the point they are questioning the integrity of God. Where is God when all this is happening? Mm. Uh, I remember one morning I had a fight with our own daughter. Uh, in the beginning of the year, we were fasting for a long time, and she said that school is on Monday. I said, I know. She said, but my uniform is torn. And I said to our girl, it's all right. The mm. Lord will provide mm. at the right time. And she said that, and you're fasting for 40 days, and you cannot buy uniform. Stop mm. this thing. Mm. And, and I said to my child, I'll buy the uniform tomorrow. Mm. Because I have to in defend the integrity of the God I speak about. Mm. And tomorrow came, and we bought uniform. Mm. <laughs> there was no question here. Mm. We, we had to buy uniform. It's just the same with the church members. Well, when they call you and they say, we're sleeping hungry, you say, I'm coming. Mm. And the last coin in your pocket must buy milk for that baby. So this time around, it has not been to the congregation. Mm. It has been the, to the pastor. Mm. Uh, let the provision come from him. Uh, and the members know very well, all the money we've given to pastor, he's not been using our money. He has kept the money. Mm. So it's a lot of money. Mm. So pastor has the money. So, so I, always when I pray, I tell God, in Abaddon, provide Father. <laughs> because your children know I have it in Abaddon. Mm. There shall be no shame. So that when people come, there is rice, there is hunger, there is milk, there is sugar. We had to provide. And we kept on looking at you on TV, mm. and we saw you with the paper bags. And, and we kept on saying, I wish the an angel of the Lord appeared to Bishop. Some of those paper bags came this way. <laughs> the need is so much on this side. And when you mentioned you are supporting pastors, mm. we felt it. Mm. We felt it. Fellow pastors call you and they say, don't mind about us. Just something for the baby. We are used to this situation. Mm. So the, the, the state of the church, Bishop, I think it's by faith. Mm -hmm. And if it was not the Lord that was on our side, mm -hmm. our testimony could be otherwise. Yes. Wow. It has not been easy in the last two years, mm -hmm. but the testimonies are tremendous. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Just the testimonies to give over this season during Corona are mm. just many. Mm. And since we came to Murera, we've even resurrected a dead body in our church. T tell us, tell us about that. A lady who's not a member of our church, mm. her child, her son died on her mm. on a Sunday, mm. and she decided not to carry the body to the morgue. Mm. And she brought the dead son to church. And I remember the fence you saw was not there. Mm. Our church was just open. You can approach from anywhere. Mm. Thank God now it is fence. When so many dead people are brought, they will have to wait at the gate. Mm. So she just walked, and, and everybody was campering for safety. Mm. And I asked, what's the commotion for? And I had one brother say, I don't eat sadaka here. Here is the pastor. And I was wondering, why are they pointing at me? Mm. And the lady brought a dead son and gave me a dead son. Mm. And I looked at the boy, he was dead. Was that on a Sunday? Or? On Sunday. We mm. just had our Holy Communion. Mm. I'm just good. My spirit is up. Mm. I'm, I just want to have a cup of tea and go home. Mm. Here is the situation. A dead body. I've never prayed for another one. Mm. So I carried the boy. I had a small office. I sat on my, on my chair with a dead body. I told them to close the door from outside. Mm. Whatever happens inside, I also don't know. Mm. Just close from outside in case you can open. Mm. So I stayed. After five minutes, I got a revelation, and Jesus called the dead. And faith came over me. Mm. I said to the dead man, arise. Mm. That's all I did, arise. And the boy came back to life. Hey, wow. you oh. will hear me now pray. Hey. <laughs> or pretending to pray. Hey. Faith came back on me. I said, open the door. Mm. The Lord has done it. And I said to the boy, do you want some juice? We had a lot of the remainder of the whole communion juice. Mm. I gave him a glass. Oh, he took it quickly. I said, these dead ones can take more. I gave him a full jug, mm. and he continued, and he continued until he regained his strength. I said, mm. call the mother. The mother comes in, sees a live boy, and he wants to die on him. I said, if you fall down, you will die for real. This one was resurrected by the grace. Not me. I don't have a resurrection ministry. Mm. I've never resurrected another one. Mm. But by God's grace, this one came back to life. Please, somebody hold that lady. Let her not fall down. Mm. I gave her back her son. Do you know what, Bishop? After a month or two, mm. I resurrected another man mm. at Barclays. Mm. I'm in the bank. I'm just queuing. And the rich man falls down and dies on us. I said, he's too rich to die. Mm. I went straight on him and I said, arise. And he came back to life. He chased us in the bank. When people come back, no wonder Jesus prayed for another one twice. Mm. <laughs> they had to get hold of him. I prayed for him again. Mm. It's when sanity came upon him. Wow. I had one sister scampering for her safety, crying, Jesus, Jesus, she's going downstairs. Mm. We were the premier side of the bank. And this sister is disappearing. This is, you are in the bank? Yes. And the man just falls. Falls and dies. Mm. And you know now I have an experience. Uh. One resurrected. This one is so simple. <laughs> <laughs> I resurrected the man. The uh. bank was packed. I was served first. They uh. said, serve pastor first. I said, hallelujah. Uh. So every time I go to Barclays, they know I'm a miracle worker. <laughs> But the only thing they did, they demolished our branch. Now mm. it has what? Mm. I see a supermarket. I see the Naiva supermarket on Moy Avenue mm. where Barclays used to be. Mm. But that's the place upstairs. In mm. the name of Jesus, and he came back to life. I said, this thing works. Mm. It's only that we don't believe. Mm. So we have seen miracles, Bishop. That building you see over there, not us. Mm. The hand of God. Mm. The hand of God. I remember one Sunday telling people, our small church, we must demolish. Mm. And we build another one. And the brother who never gives it, stood and said, let's not build another Mabati church. Let's do a block church. Mm. And he never gives a coin. And mm. he's now the one prophesying. So we put together what we had. We began with one wall bishop. Mm. Then on a Sunday, by God's grace, a church member did another wall. Mm. That Sunday, my wife seated there, took a loan to do another wall. Mm. So we had a wall, ring of a wall around our church, surrounding the Mabati church. Then it rained. There was a lake in that church, Bishop. Mm. You could not believe the water I saw that Sunday. So I told the people, it's simple. By next Sunday, everybody carries an umbrella. Mm. We shall have an open heaven. Mm. We're going to demolish this building. When you come, just cover yourself with your umbrella. Mm. And that's what I did on Monday. Mm. Came 
with a few people. We demolished them about the church. Now we had the four walls surrounding us. Just, uh, the, just the walls, no, yeah, no. In fact, three walls, uh. no, not four. We've done three. Uh, because one is attached to the Sunday school and there is a portion you can just run through. Mm. So you said the Holy Spirit will be moving over these waters on Sunday. Mm. Mm. So while I'm seated in that place, the Lord spoke to me and said, you have favor in the land. Mm. So I went to the hardware and I said, I need a credit note. And they said, Bishop, your church is very small. Mm. We can do a credit note of a one million. Mm. Had never been a debt of 100,000. Mm. But now this man is giving me a debt of one million. Mm. I said, it's all right. We began to carry everything we needed. Bishop, by Friday, we had roofed that church the way it is. Mm. We had roofed. So by the time people came on Sunday, they said, you should stop lying to us that you don't have money. You are a multimillionaire. Mm. The money you got from the Americans, you still have. Mm. So every time you tell us to give, you just lie. Where did you get all the money to do the roof? What they didn't know. Mm. And the amount of debt I had outside mm. was amounting to almost 470000 Mm. By God's grace, I remember one day you came. Mm. By that time, I was finishing that debt. That church was quite new by that time. Mm. We were finishing the debt, and God helped us. Mm. Today, we have that place for worship. We've begun another wing, the administration block, uh, with around 10 toilets uh, that are modern. Then mm. we have the Sunday school. We want to do it to six stories. Mm. Uh, we have the Sunday school. We want to make it what God will give me the grace to do. Mm -hmm. By the time I retire, the pastor that comes can make it the complex he desires. But, but as for now, we're doing the best we can. We've seen the grace of God. Wow. We've witnessed miracles upon miracles, God's provision. When we are down, he opens the door. When we don't know what next, he just opens the door. We've seen the grace. Mm -hmm. We've seen the grace. I remember one day, that floor you saw over there, uh, that was like a manhole. Yeah, quite deep. I remember we used how many tippers? 17 tippers mm. to fill that 60 by 60 space. That, wow. that, that, that landscaping was not easy for that church mm. inside. So, so how did God provide? I'm just seated on that altar. The church is new. It doesn't have even doors. Mm. And a man walks in with his wife and they say, Bishop, why are you not working on the church? I say, I don't have the money. Mm. And they say, not you, us. God has given us the money. They gave me a paper bag full of 500,000. Wow. 500,000. Mm. And what are the members of the church? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, a member of the church. Mm. Gave me 500,000. By evening, I had filled that hole. Wow. So by Sunday, we had a good flow. Mm. The following week, they brought me another 500 or 700,000. I did it a razzle. Mm. So I told the people, we shall do it like royalty. Because it is not us, it is divine provision. Mm. And in return, we've seen the grace. Wow. God has shielded us from so many things. Mm. He has protected us. God has been faithful on us. So we, we can't complain about ministry. We've been on the better side of ministry. So our desire is that uh, God restores the church back to where it was. And we continue serving God. As we wait for Jesus, mm. whichever comes first, we are ready. Mm. Amen. So this, this uh, let's go back to this boy that was dead. Yes. Did the mother ever come back to church? Or she she, she didn't just come back to our church. She, she just did. disappeared? Yes. But, but we know where she lives. Mm. Yeah. With the miracle she received from our church. I believe she's telling people how God resurrected the boy. Mm. <laughs> because she never came back. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yes. So did you get people who knew, who knew her? Yes. Mm. Uh, we had two members who stayed close to our house. Mm. Yeah, and they testified to us, we know this lady, mm. and we know what happened. And uh, what did the son die of? The child must have gotten pneumonia. It was mm. during the July season. Mm. So I think it got worse. Mm. And the mother didn't know how to react, and the boy died on her. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we, 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 we bless the Lord for what he's doing. Amen. Now you have said uh, the church is picking up after, after yes, Corona. Yes, the church is picking up and mm -hmm. we trust God not to go backward again.
Mm. The church is picking up. The faith of the people is being built. Mm. Uh, most of our members were teachers. Most of our members were people who were working in that community. So what happened is that most of them relocated. Mm. So we're now we're having new members that we have to teach the ABCD of faith mm. and walk them through the Christian life. Mm. So we're seeing restoration. Mm. Uh, we're not back to the second service. We're trusting mm. God to begin our second service in January. Uh, as we weigh the situation. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, now, you know, there are people maybe living around that area yes. mm -hmm. and like to know the location of the church. Uh, what is the location of the church? How would people get to your, to your church? We are quite on the road. Uh, if you find yourself on Kimbo Matangi Road, I believe this is my camera, find yourself on Kimbo Matangi Road. Uh, we are roughly 300 meters from the main road. That's the thicker super highway. You just turn left from Am I turning left? Yes, from Thika. You turn left at Kimbo. You drive for three minutes, four minutes. You are already at Deliverance Church Morera. You will see us. There's a big signpost, Deliverance Church Morera. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, well then, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for, for coming. Thank you. And uh, uh, so, Jacqueline, are you involved in the, in, in the ministry, in the ministry, in the church, or you... Just comfortable working for KRA? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Um, um, I, I minister mostly to, to children, mm. um, young children in the Sunday school, but recently I started also taking uh, another uh, direction for the youth. Mm -hmm. I realize we need to, to mentor our youth mm -hmm. seriously because we have come to a place where Okay, we have so many of them in the church, mm. but as they as they mature mm. and they want to get married, they they just disappear from mm. the church mm. circles. And we hear some of them have gotten babies out out of marriage and all that. Mm. Some of them we meet them along the way, and they tell you I'm married, and it's like this and like this. But mm. this is a member you had, mm. and I feel this is not the right direction for mm. for our youth. We need to mentor them. In such, in such a way that as they leave youth and they are, they are mature, they, want, mm. they need to get married, mm. they live in the, right, in the right way. Okay. Yes. Well, well thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend uh, and Mama, for, for coming. I trust that you have received something out of uh, uh, Reverend Kaunya and Jacqueline's testimony and, and life that all things are possible to him that believes. And where you are, is not permanent. You could be you could be riding a bicycle with the, all the whole of your family, but you are not you have not been concreted there. That is just a season, and the season is just about to come to an end. You could be in a situation where maybe everything was stolen from you by Corona, but I want you to know that is just but a season. The God, the God who has lifted our Reverend Kaunya is our God and is your God. I want to say thank you so much. We love you and we value you. This is your pastor and your friend for a long time, Bishop Mark Karaoke, where through open talk. Until next Wednesday, we say thank you. May the Lord richly bless you. And thank you, Reverend, coming. Thank you, Jacqueline, Amen. for coming. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Uh, and have a super, super night. We'll see you again this coming Wednesday night. God bless you. <laughs>